and today we are going to be doing something pretty special. We're going to be putting row cleaners on a big, huge 60 foot end series drill. Good morning, guys. It is early morning and we are up in Bow Bells, North Dakota, and we have made it. So we just talked to Brian here. He's going to be pulling that big drill over here in the grass so that we have a good place to work. And I'm going to go get the skid steer, go start getting some of our parts. This is Brian. This is a farmer that we're going to be helping here. We've got an N-series drill with a C850 cart and we're going to be doing row cleaners on your machine. That's right. And uh, why row cleaners? Uh, just looking for uh, more even emergence. Yep. Get, get rid of some of the uh, trash and make it a little more even across the whole field. Seeing too many things when I'm in the sprayer that uh, we're not doing a good enough job with uh, trash. Right, yep. So definitely if we can get that trash out of the way, get the the row or the disc able to cut through without hairpinning, that'd make a big difference. This is definitely one of the biggest machines that we've worked on that has a three rank machine with the mid row banders. We have a 620 horsepower RX John Deere tractor, a 60 foot N series. This is the new 1895 version. And here we have the C-Series 850 bushel air cart. This thing is massive. One day we'll be working on this thing, but so far it's still going pretty good. With the size of this machine, one of the challenges is how to tackle this. This thing is 60 feet across and it is three ranks. So you got your front mid row banding fertilizer rank. And then we have two seed rows, each 20 inch spacing, but collectively 10 inch when they're seeding. And we got to figure out how to essentially crawl all the way from here to there. And these row cleaners that are going to be going on will be attaching here and will take up this available space. So really you're left with almost no room and even a skinny guy like me I think would have a tough time crawling through there. So. We've got the machine folded up here and we dropped the rear ranks so we can get one of these row cleaners on. We are making good progress here. We're doing some pre-assembly, some quality control checking to make sure everything's going to be good and tight. Uh, Nathaniel's in here installing the front rank, innermost belly of the machine. How is it in there? Actually not that bad. Figure it out if you do it from this side, it's pretty easy. Yeah. Good thing Nathaniel's nice and and small. <laughs> Row cleaners are something that's really common on planters, but on air drills you don't see it a lot. We're installing these Yetter pneumatic cylinder controlled row cleaners. They mount right up here on the arm and they've got these row cleaner discs right here that are like a shark tooth blade. And as the trash comes through, this row unit comes across, the row cleaner actually pushes the trash out of the way. The disc here can then cut down through the ground, not worrying about trying to jam all the stocks down in the ground and cause an issue called hairpinning. No-till field that has a lot of corn tracks or other heavy residue. This can be a big problem as this try to cut through this here. And a lot of times it can't fully cut through it. So it jams it down into the furrow seed gets placed in there around that a lot of times it won't germinate and so this row cleaner device pushes it out of the way making a nice clean seed bed for the row to properly put the seed in the ground we're making good progress here we've got the air compressor out and I'm trying to figure out how to mount this guy out on the frame uh, some options here we can put it up here we got this big old tire that actually won't clear uh, the bottom of that and we could put it up here but then i'm looking at all this mud that get chucked up on it so really the best spot that i can tell is right down in that cavity i went ahead and drew out some brackets here put my engineering skills to the test 
and we're gonna send this off to a local fabricator and hopefully have it by tomorrow so we can get this air compressor mounted and move on with the other things like routing. Quick update guys, we've got all the row cleaners installed, tightened down on both the inner wing, both inner wings actually and the mainframe. You can see them laid out here real nice. They're mounted and ready for the air lines that have to go to them. So that's gonna be a big part tomorrow. adventure here doing this big row cleaner job and we're well rested from yesterday staying in town and we're out here ready to get going big day today we're gonna be finishing putting the row cleaners on doing all the airlines hooking it all up I want this thing to be rocking and rolling into today so that we have some good testing time tomorrow <laughs> Got the control box in. Nice spot for it. Centrally located, protected. Wings won't hit it. And the compressor's gonna go right here. Perfect spot. Well guys, it's now drizzling out, but made some good headway. We've got a custom fabricated tube right in here, right for the air compressor. Let go here in a minute. So we were just talking that when you get a big object like this and that's one of those monumental moments that makes you really feel like you're making good progress whereas you're routing hoses or running airlines it just seems like you spend five hours and hardly get anywhere but still a very important and necessary thing so we got our air compressor set in here we got our mounting brackets we'll get that set i've got hydraulic hoses we're going to tie right into the case drain here on the air drill so I don't have to run all the way to the front and then we've got some hoses being made at uh, the local dealer we're going to run up to number five SCV uh, we had a an issue where some of the parts not all the parts made it here but uh, thankfully the guys they sent the missing harness next to air we got that in just a few hours ago and then also had to have some other harnesses sent uh, from our warehouse to make this work because this configuration is a little different than I think a lot of the older machines are. It is nearing the end of the evening here. It's about 7 o'clock and we've got all the Airlines routed along the drill here. All the blue and the black. We just got our air compressor all hooked up, plumbed, air separator here. Here we got all the wire harness hooked up. The control box is flashing. So now is the part of the day where we get to turn the key on and see if it all works. One eternity later. It's right here. Non-specific system. Yetter. 2940 air adjust system. Activate system. Look at that. Well, that's exciting, guys. Now, Tommy showed up here. This is Brian's son. And if you haven't checked him out yet, uh, Tommy Hill Farmer is his YouTube page. Yep. We've got a lot of great content on there and if you guys want to see more of these drills running especially that n-series drill check it out it is day three today and we're here 7 30 a.m bright-eyed bushy-tailed and we got our typical dose of heavy dew laying on everything and it's starting to drizzle but look beautiful rainbow it's actually a beautiful gorgeous morning this morning 
we're gonna be wrapping this stuff up. Our goal is by 10 o'clock, we're air pressure testing everything. And by 11, we've all folded up, checked for possible pinch points and anything else that could get in the way. And we're ready to go to the field here so we can get some testing out there and see how it does. And just like that, our sunshine and our rainbow are gone and now it's raining. So you're working on the dump valves? Yeah. It would take too long if if you waited for the normal air system to lift the row units when you're at the end of the headlands. And so the dump valves make it so they come up really fast so that the row cleaners don't drag on the ground while you're turning around at the headland. So a very important part of the system and we got to get it fully routed in here. Let's see if the row cleaners go up. Go up to 30. Here we're checking for any pinch points, make sure everything's gonna clear as this thing goes into transformer mode. going to the field we're gonna go check it out see how she does we just got a little spot over there We're out here in the field and one thing we observed is the row cleaners aren't going down far enough so they're not doing enough of the work that they need to to clear the trash out of the way. So we're gonna pull the pins to drag it. And then right now we have it set at 60 psi which we can probably knock down to 50. And then to put the yetter down we just click the down button and then that'll drop all the rows and then Put it in gear. So well, today, it's just gonna be a review of these row cleaners that we got going here. So uh, this year we put on yet a row cleaners, air adjust. So I got the iPad here. I got it set kind of the way I want it. We'll know when the crop is up how exactly how. Uh, how well it worked you know right now you're putting it in and you know that you're getting the seed to soil contact and you know you're doing a good job but when it comes up that's really what you need to see and that's really the goal of, of why we have these right now I'm running it at 50 psi oh wow look at this job you can see exactly where that row is and how it, clean it is underneath we're running it at 50 psi it's really digging out the dirt here right to where our disc is you can definitely tell it's pulling stuff out of the ground and this isn't trash this is all roots because this was hay hay ground that is sweet okay so i'm out here scouting one of the fields uh, this is one that I didn't use row cleaners in. I'm seeing pretty good emergence on it. You can definitely tell that it was limited a little bit by how much trash was in the way. But it overall wasn't that bad. This is kind of the test against the field that I'm going to show you next here. Um, where I use the row cleaners all the way across it. It's not doing as well as it should. And the goal is to be able to get all the way through the trash. So we'll, we'll give kind of an overview here looking down in the rows. All right, so I'm out here in a field where I did use the row cleaners. And there's a pretty similar amount of trash, but I'm seeing a bit more even emergence. Like even through all the rows, we're getting down into the soil. 
And even though we might have been throwing the trash from the back rink, you can't really tell now. But still, it looks really good. And it's still coming down here, even where it was compacted and where it couldn't get down and, and where the road cleaners couldn't get down and get that straw out of the way. But I think if we look down in here and get down underneath into where our furrow was, you know, we're still, we're, we're, there's nothing down in there, which is, is really what this is because it's okay to have a uh, straw on top because it should be able to push through that as long as it has good seed to soil contact underneath. But comparing these two fields, you know, seeded on the same day within hours of each other, really, I guess we'll, we'll keep it update, keep you guys updated at Red E. And uh, yeah, this one experiment that we had and I think that it's, it's gonna be something that we really, really like here. Make sure you like and subscribe to keep up on all the fresh content posted weekly, which includes helpful tips and tricks, new products, and various adventures. Also, make sure you check out Ready's website to shop our performance air seeder solutions. Mm -hmm.